Um, and before introducing Professor Chen Yongfa from Taiwan, I would like to take this opportunity, first of all, to thank one institution and one person who have made the Humanitas Visiting Professorship in Chinese Studies possible. Uh, and, well, two persons actually. The first is Lord Weidenfeld of the Institute of Strategic Dialogue, a think tank dedicated to bridging divides through policy innovation, education, leadership and development. And this is what we are doing here, having strategic dialogues. And um, the Institute of Strategic Dialogue is today represented here by Natalia. So please welcome to you. <laughs> this must have happened before, really. <laughs> um, I also want to thank Sir David Tang, who is make, makes, who, whose funding makes this particular instantation of the Humanitas Professorships possible. I'm sure we all know Sir David Tang. He is an OBE, a K KBE, founder of the world famous Shanghai Tang clothing chain, but also, I read on Wikipedia, a socialite and a satirical agony ant for the Financial Times. So there you go. <laughs> many, many talents. Let me then turn to Professor Chen who over the next two weeks will talk about various aspects of China's revolution. And the organizing committee, uh, of which Adam Chow, who is here, Susan de Ruvela, Yuridan Bulak in the back, Bo Ping Yuan, who is there, and myself are all members. We sort of selected this theme because of so two reasons. One is, as, as Li Zihou and Liu Taifu argued already a decade and a half or so, Go, China has said farewell to revolution, under Deng Xiaoping, after which China rapidly commercialized, with the result, of course, that many people have become well off and some extraordinarily rich. And while a generation ago, people like Chen Yongfa and me studied how the CCP was able to win China's revolution and take charge in China, now we face the issue of what China's revolution has after all is said and done, what it has meant for China, what its historical significance has been, and how it continues to work through in the present. And that is an important question relating to how China thinks of itself, to how it conceives of its role in the world, how it thinks about its own past, what it should stand for as a nation. And yet, despite the best efforts of the new left in China, the discussions about these topics remain muted at best in China itself, in the PRC, while here in Europe the books about China that sell well focus on its economic miracle or the evils of Mao, and all that is, of course, far too simplistic. And that is sort of the reason why we thought this, this really important issue of what China makes, what we all in China especially, makes of its own revolution is something that is, came as a uniquely well-placed place to start talking about this. And that's what we're trying to do over the next two weeks, and of course, especially at the symposium. And we are extremely fortunate in having Chen Yongfa to talk about this. Professor Chen has spent his entire career at the Academia Sinica, serving as head of the Institute of Modern History, and now he is a Yuan Shi, an academician at the Academia Sinica, the highest academic accolade available in Taiwan. He is hugely respected, not just in China, but also in the PRC, and widely regarded as the most knowledgeable person about the history of the Chinese revolution living today. And that is clear, for instance, from a well-known saying among China historians in China, namely, Xi'an Dongchen, translated as, in the West there is Yang Kuei-sung, and in the East there is Chen Yongfa a play on the famous analysis of the founding of the CCP, which headed that Beili Nanshan, uh, which means Li Jiao in the north and Chen Zhou in the south, as the founders of the Chinese Communist Party. Today, um, Professor Chen will be talking about, well, let me first of all mention he's, of course, published a great deal. One is his first book that came out of his dissertation at Stanford, was Making Revolution. If you want to know how to make revolution, you need to read that <laughs> book. <laughs> also, Yen on Shadows, a 70-year history of the CCP, which came out at the 70th anniversary of the CCP's founding, and a history, a very thick history, 
of the Academia Sinica itself. Today's theme is Yenon's rectification campaign from 42 to 44, including the way that Deng Kai-shek related to the rectification movement. So with that, please join me in welcoming Professor Chen. Thank you for the nice uh, introduction. Uh, okay. I just earlier he said a bit about the farewell and the revolution. I just thought when I wrote the 70 years of Chinese revolution, I used that last chapter the, uh, in the third part, the title of the third part. So, but uh, recently I began to a little bit uh, try to say farewell to the common study, because I just think, you know, common study, when you really want to know this kind of stuff, you also should know more about the another revolution, early one, the, the Kennedy Nationalist Revolution. So I began to move forward now. And by chance, I had some kind of uh, materials and, uh, about nationalist and government, particularly I had a kind of version of Jiang Haixi's diaries. Uh, I never read it. I never read it, the whole thing in as the original one in standard. I just read the underground and the, uh, the, the versions. The men and scholars try to compile. So I use that kind of uh, try to learn more about the, the nationalist revolution and also read some kind of the revolution in the nineteen eleven something. Uh, and today okay. Uh, but first, uh, let's say, uh, it's really thank to I'm very thank thankful to kind of, uh, Hans, an uh, old friend, and uh, to, to have this kind of opportunity to talk to you people. Uh, it's really good and on to do this. Uh, uh, now, the paper I wrote, I never learned how to write kind of a national or something. So usually when I write, I write in the table and type. So I just write long, and this one, the, the, the subject I want to write, uh, today I want to talk about the rectification. So in fact, it's a really big one. But uh, in order to kind of say, to, to show the, uh, some relevance about the kind of, to do some kind of comparative between the communist kind of practice and the next kind of practice, so I, I just try to use kind of Jiang as the beginning. Yeah. So, because, uh, and to show, yeah. and, but anyway, after I finish writing, uh, it's really kind of big one. Uh, so, when I came here, before I came here, I don't know, this is short, one of lectures, but I don't know, so I, don't, I didn't know how to kind of, to cut my meat, <laughs> fresh, so I did. So today I just, uh, I made some kind of cut, yeah. But today I will basically try to read the whole thing. Then I show you some of the, like, the, the uh, slides because I think a lot of people heard of, may, may heard, uh, may hear those kind of names and people, but the names say how they look like. So I will show some gender. Okay, let's kind of begin. Uh, first, uh, uh, the Maoist Revolution. Can we can, can begin from? Uh, this is the today the three parts. Uh, yeah. So the first is one word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the, 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 the paper is kind of the structure in the three parts. Is, uh, well, I begin from Jiang Hansen's reading about the rectification, uh, and I will end uh, and, and ask in the beginning I asked the question. You know, well, Jiang was greatly impressed by the. the the 22 kind of documents of Mao, but he thought they are really kind of good thing. He he read it constantly, and so I ask a question: Is you know whether he 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 can can duplicate the experience and give his own kind of rule? In the end, um, so I have the question: Can Jiang Taixi duplicate the Yunnan rectification? But I think uh, to answer the, all the questions, I have to begin. What they actually come to do uh, for the rectification. Uh, so, 
uh, start from the rectification. Uh, the first one, uh, the intra-party struggles among the top leaders, Wang Mi, Qing and uh, uh, read the first part. Rectification is an English translation of a unique term coined by Mao in the early 1940s. To understand it as a process, it should be put in the context of the continual intra-party struggle which Mao Zedong had undertaken in his efforts uh, uh, to discredit the party leadership of Wang Ying, Qin Bangxian, and uh, Zhang Wentian. Despite his return to the inner circle of the political bureau in January 1935, Mao was yet to become the party's nominal and paramount uh, leader until after the sixth planning of the Sixth Party Congress in late 1938 and early 1939. In the famous Zhong Yi Conference during the long march of early 1935, he had launched a scathing attack on the party leadership without prior commenting agreement in the wake of a major military debacle. Uh, Zhang Wentian, a Russia returned student, alienated by Wang Ming's success as party secretary, Qin uh, Bangxian, joined hand with Mao and became the party's general secretary. Uh, this, uh, Mao did get the real power in 1935. That was a totally fabricated myth. Uh, actually, the power was in Zhang Wentian, uh, yeah, pretend students. Okay. Uh, uh, so become the, uh, so become the most influential member of the political bureau. Mao Zedong focused his energy more uh, on military affairs as the chairman of the revolutionary military committee of the party center, and allowed Wang Zhang Wentian to take the aim of the party center uh, in early nineteen. Uh, so in that kind of period, sometimes Mao would address Kan Zhang as the, the enlightened kind of king, uh, enlightened kind of emperor sometimes, because he was not really in power anyway. Uh, but he was powerful and influential. In early 1937, Mao Zedong and Zhang Wenting cooperated in discrediting Zhang Guotao, this, uh, this is another community leader, of the latter's kind of army had suffered a total annihilation in the so-called Western expedition along the Gansu Corridor. Uh, actually, this time the army was directed by Mao, not by Zhang Wentian, but Zhang, well, by Zhang Guotao. Uh, but Mao took that as opportunity to describe him completely. Uh, and this is the first one, the first major victory. Uh, then later, in 1937, when the former secretary Secretariat member Wang Ming, together with Chen Yun and Kang Sen, flew back from Moscow. The party center went through a realignment of power, contrary to what we might expect from the party chart of factionalism of the 28th Bolsheviks. Wang Ming made no attempt to rally his, uh, his earlier supporters and instead undermined the leadership of his fellow Western students, Zhang Wenqian with disparaging remarks. Whether hidden remarks were concerned with his incompetence as a party leader or with the contamination by the supposed highness truckism, Zhang Wenqian suffered and became a Nimda leader. Mao did not take advantage of the occasion, only watching passively and welcoming the incorporation of Wang Ming, Chen Yun, and the Council into the Secretary Secretary uh, which then acted as the holder of the real power in the party. See the Supreme Leader in name, Zhang Wenqian now exercised power only as one of nine Secretariat members. Policy disputes soon manifest themselves over how the party should cope with the new Chinese situation. It faced with the outbreak of the anti-Japanese war. Mao saw no use of the Communist Army to actively join and boost the nationalist defense 
of its territory and urged instead to take advantage of the collapse of the KMT front to construct and expand independent base areas, including the formation of new military units, the installation of rural governments, and the creation of peasants' associations and the development of the grassroots party organizations. Mao emphasized the United Front uh, between communists and nationalists as a parameter and facilitator to his uh, to the United uh, to the independent oper operation. With Stalin's instruction in mind, however, one emphasized the United Front as a facilitator for nationalist resistance against the Japanese aggression, urging cyber trends and giving no grounds for the nationalist authority to suspect communist motivation, particularly in the middle young where the nationalist government still maintained the powerful presence. He also merged more to act with several strength in the communist army's expansion in North China behind the Japanese front lines and even to fight the Japanese army under the nationalist command. When the nationalist government was preparing the defense of the Wuhan area, another Russia returned students came back from Moscow to Yang'an in August 1938. He brought with him Stalin's instruction that all the Secretariat members should unite around the Mao Zedong's supreme leadership. In the subsequent six planning, Mao Zedong took over the actual leadership of the party center. But only after the earlier departure of Wang Yin, Qin Bangxian, Zhou Enlai, and Xiang Yin to central China, did he truly assert his newly acquired authority. <coughs> As the earlier departure failed to turn Wuhan into the Madrid of Jiang Kai-chi's China and seemed to have vindicated the Mao's policy line of independent expansion behind the Japanese lines, he came out to criticize their policy as implied in the slogan, everything through the United Front. Placed in an embarrassing position by the turn of events, Wang Ming returned to Yang'an and made no counter-attacks. He silently accepted whatever assignments he could get from the more dominant party center. With an eye to winning over the split group of returned children, Mao retained Zhang Wenqian's service, asking him to continue to chair the meeting of the party center and handle other routine works of the secretariat. In addition to the party's propaganda department and cadre education department, Zhang Wenqian thus continued to push for creatively studying Marx, Engels, Nelly, and Stalin in the spirit of applying their thought to concrete Chinese uh, uh, counties and unifying them theory with practice. Around this time, Mao Zedong was inspired by reading Stalin's works on intra-party struggle. In, the 19, in late 1938, he read a summary of the history of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union short course, which he which his representative in Moscow, Lin Bi Si, had read in the Pravda in installment. Mao immediately asked the discredited Qin Bangxian to reform, to form a team to translate this book. In 1939, Mao read the book with intense interest, discovering how the Russia party, particularly Stalin, had strived in incessant struggle against both external and internal enemies. According to the book, which Stalin had actually edited, it should be natural for a party to go through incessant intra-party intra struggle between two lines. Stalin represented the correct line, his political opponents, the Iranians one. The struggle between two lines intensified as re the revolution deepened. Moreover, this dry test ten times. Okay. He never finished reading the capital uh, box because he thought that's too dull. It's boring. <laughs> okay. he, he make his stick. But he read the kind of this one. 
For me, I, I, this book is also dry, the dog. It's very long, but in the ten times. <laughs> and advance, advise the first his colleagues, and later the whole party to read it intensively. From this canyon, he also realized learning and study had consecutively enriched Marxism in applying it as a universally valid theory to particular Russian soil. Taking this hint, he could follow their footsteps and enrich Marxist uh, Lenin uh, Stalinism by creatively applying it to the concrete Chinese context. It is obvious that he aspired to become China's and Stalin. To imitate Stalin, he also wanted to write the Chinese Kanpati history along the same lines. This consideration gave extra motivation for Mao to undertake intra-party struggle to criticize and discredit his predecessors' party leadership, particularly Wang Yi, and to want him them to make self-criticism accordingly. Moreover, in the spring of 1940, Stalin had the impression that the long-delayed party congress of the Chinese Communist Party would soon be called uh, by Comington General Secretary George Dimitrov, he advised Mao on the future, com future composition of the Chinese com Communist Party leadership. You know, the, the, the Russian study had really kind of strong influence about all this kind of uh, Chinese kind of parties kind of, uh, and the, the, the matters. On the basis of the cadre screen uh, by the personal department of Comington, he recommended that Wang Ming should not be given top position within the party. So Stalin gave the support to Mao. And he said that Mao's major enemy, Wang Ming, could not be put in the power position. He also uh, informed the Chinese party that Kansen and the other three people uh, should not enter the political bureau and the secretariat. And Qin Bangxian, the former kind of party secretary, and the other five people uh, 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 could not put on the kind of central committee, in addition to barring them from any positions concerning personnel, organization, and the security matters. Uh, furthermore, he recommended uh, a list of 26 candidates for the party leadership on the basis of information supplied by Mao's representative in Moscow, Ren Bishu, and Zhou Enlai. He was in Moscow at that time, and Mao Zedong's brother, Mao Zedong. Uh, 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 Dimitrov did not make this recommendation mandatory, just Mao activated or created his own cadre screen mechanism to make a new round of personal scrutiny. As later, Composition of the party leadership issues, Mao made a selective acceptance of Comington instructions uh, and actually relied on Kansen, of whom the Comington was super uh, suspicious for rectification as well as cadre screen. He placed not only Kansen on the political bureau, but also the discredited Wang Ying and uh, Qin Bangxian on the central committee. And the end of Rage stage was set for further intra party struggle. Without any back informed returned students and other secretary members, Qin Wangqing and uh, had already capitulated to Mao's attack and um, made the mistakes beyond military leadership. Both Wang Ming and uh, Zhang Wenting, while agreeing that uh, Qin Wangqing leadership uh, didn't make mistakes, refused to consider errors in terms of a comprehensive party line. Uh, Due to the support uh, from some other secretary members, they insisted on their view. Mao's chance grew when Wang Ming's chief supporter, Xiang Yi, the only secretary member uh, with genuine proletarian background, died as an afterthought fact of the New Force Army incident in early 1941. Two months later, Mao not only intensified his criticism of uh, this his formal commissar, but also began to prepare further assault on the party's earlier leadership, particularly for 
the Wang's leadership. Around the same time, the famous reputation speech on correcting our study uh, uh, criticized and marked the phenomena of subjectivism and dogmatism by which he specifically, specifically mean, meant studying foreign Marxist theories without making any efforts to understand the domestic history and the realities. He pointed out that some Marxist scholars only memorized the vocabulary of Marx, Engels, Lenin, and Stalin, making no attempt to link the, uh, the canons to practice and knowing neither Chinese history nor current events. These dogmatic and objective scholars whom, whose name more deliberately withheld started the theories for the sake of study without the slightest idea of how to apply them to the Chinese revolution. Mao satirized them as bamboo roots in the mountains with pointed mouth, thick faces, and empty stomach. This is, uh, uh, Mao, uh, and the piping weights on the wall with heavy head, uh, light legs, and shallow roots. This is the way he portrayed them. Uh, Mao well, further warned that if the party continued to allow such persons to dominate the way of study, the, revolution, the revolution would be kind of doomed. The speech was made in a study meeting attended by cadre from the Department of Propaganda and Cadre Education, or both of which the nominal party secretary Zhang Wenting had presided. It seemed that nobody heeded Mao's words. Only when the time was ready did he arrange his speech to appear in the party's organ, the Liberation Daily, and it became the leading essay for the volume of reflection documents to ensure wider um, circu circulation. But he knew he could not prevail in his inter-party struggle against the Wang Ying, uh, Chi Bang Qin, and Zhang Wenten leadership, and is provided with solid documentary evidence. Therefore, he proceeded to thoroughly reorganize the prestigious editing committee of the Secretariat, replacing all the top echelon leaders uh, with purely and editing staff and shifting priority from the publishing party periodicals to publishing selected party documents with an, uh, an eye to demonstrating the errors of the earlier party leadership, he devoted himself to compiling and editing of a collection of documents called the 66th Congress, with a firm belief that the uncovered documents would convincingly show, oh, uh, he hoped, uh, how his correct party line had struck against the erroneous party line and was eventually vindicated. Mao drafted a sketching attack on what he called the 39th left party line from 1931 to 1936, i.e. the 39th after Chi Chou Bai's first and the Lisan the second. I mean, so never the general secretary served as the real power holder since January 1931 with the strong backing of the government representative of China. His mentor and director of the, at Moscow, Shenzhen University, Pablo Miv, Miv. Three months after the nationalists arrested and executed the nominal general secretary in late, gen, general secretary in late June 1931, and one week after the Mukden incident in September 18, 1931, he left Shanghai for Moscow. In Mao's essay, Wang Ming, however, started a left party line worse than his predecessors, which reached its zenith under Qin Bangxian leadership, eventually leading to the near destruction of the Communist Party throughout China, particularly in the Middle Yang. Mao accused this left party line of subjectivism and more specifically dogmatism and derided Wang Ming as a evil, as a devil incarnate who had no grasp of the Chinese reality, uh, its history, culture, society, and international environment as well. 
He ran really near the party line, permeated the party, and resulted in the adoption of long strategic and policies. Military, the party adopted passive defense in the face of an overriding, overwhelming enemy that led to the demise of the communist state. Communist state. Politically, it failed to recognize the rising Chinese communist nationalism in front of rising Japanese aggressive. Economically, it confiscated landlords' land holdings and discriminated against rich peasants without pressing them in Stalin's gulag system. Organizationally, it used the relentlessness struggle meeting and a severe punishment to deal with higher ranking cadres who had failed to comply with orders and uh, deliver results, thereby actually creating a system of communism and uh, secretarianism that favored only the small group of Russia classmates, his Russia classmates. While admitting some mistakes, Wang Ming refused to accept the most view with an, that an erroneous party line had permeated all the important fields of party leadership. He instead argued that he had nothing to do with the major problems of Qinbangxian leadership because he was away from China, unable to maintain smooth communication with the communist headquarters on the scene. He reminded Mao that despite his absence from China, he made his best efforts to remedy the situation and even to promote Mao's international reputation. As for his party leadership in 1931, he emphasized the close superintendence of Covington authority. He unwittingly revealed his unwitting revelation that Qin Bangxing and Zhang Wenqing had been instructed to call a secretarial meeting once they reached the Soviet area from Shanghai, however, shocked them all and led him to accuse the Qinbangxian Party Center of usurping party, army, and political power. No matter how Qinbangxian and Zhang Wenqian explained the pressure kind of situation. So he used Wang Ming's words against the, the other two returned students. Unable to pressure Wang Ming, Qin Bangxian, Zhang Wenqian, Mao spread the compile, compilation of the Stockman's party history since the Sixth Party Congress. Once a preliminary version was finished around June 1941, he immediately made it required readings for all the higher ranking of cadres, whom he organized into several study group teams, practicing criticism and self criticism uh, in light of the co collected documents. Later, all the cadre above the regional bureau uh, level throughout the communist areas were required to study in the same way, but Lin Bixi was authorized to delete whatever he considered party secrets from the versions. So this is also these documents, but in reality something are missed and some kind of documents were changed in terms. But also Mao think that he preserved the essence of everything. In 1942, Mao published a supplementary volume called Before the Sixth Party Congress. After the inter-party struggle reached the peak and became a rectification of the higher and middle kind of category, Mao first published the abridged version of the two works under a new title called The Struggle Between Two Lines in 1943. While keeping circulation of since the Sixth Congress restricted, uh, uh, restricted, it remained classified until the 1980s of the books. Nobody can get that. Uh, later, the public, but the circulation is still limited. But uh, why strange? We can even in Taiwan, we can easily cut the, the whole volumes. Okay. Mao was more careful about his own private criticism of Wang Ming, Qin Bangxian, and Zhang Wenqian, Mao showed his criticism only to two of his chief political supporters, Liu Shaoqi and Lin Bixi, and to his personal secretary, Fu Qiangmu, whom he had instructed with collecting and editing the documents from the party history. Only selected parts were revealed first by Fu Qiangmu before his death in 1992, and later by the party in a new edition 
of most select work in 1993. Okay. After the institution was kind of rearranged, was announced that France attacked our department leadership from 1931 and 1937 uh, to 1937 in a last meeting of the Secretariat Secret, Secret, Secret in September and October 1941. In the absence of this secretary member, secretariat member, more invited the, the attendance of some higher ranking party cadres as either witness or accuser of the secretariat member. Secretariat member. These added participants were either the classmates of Wang Min, Qin Bang Xin, and Zhang Wenqian in Moscow. So not all the Russian Chinese were purged. That's not true. And they actually supported more in Japan. Yeah. And uh, all their aids for organization and the secretarial <coughs> affairs. And the only two exceptions were Gao Gang, a major victim survivor of the bloody kind of purge conducted during the uh, tripartite candidacy. And Fu Qiaomu, the actual compiler of the party documents, his most address, uh, Mao made an opening speech setting the tone by severely criticizing subjectivism and se secretari uh, sec secretarianism permeating the party ever since 1928. Without naming Wang Ming, Qin Bangxian, and Zhang Wenqian, Mao described the subjectivists as phony Marxists, dressing the Marxist old coat and calling themselves followers of the Communist line. Mao made it clear that their erroneous line, so correct in some aspects, still had a strong residual influence of 1939. He then asked every secretary member to make a criticism and self criticism. In actuality, all the invited participants began to bear witness for what they had seen and experienced under the erroneous party line. So uh, he packed the meeting and announced the attack. Uh, as Mao no longer insisted on the charge of usurpation of party power, both Qin Bang Xian and Zhang Wenqian capitulated and accepted the thesis of party line mistakes. Only one, only one means stubbornly defended his own leadership and distanced himself from the Qin Bang Xian and Zhang Wenqian. While Mao tried to criticize his, uh, his efforts <coughs> to ruin Mao's policy line, after his return to China, Wang Ming responded by emphasizing the common instruction and criticizing Mao's policy of expansion as provocative and detrimental to the United Front with the nationalist government. Afterwards, Wang Ming pled serious sickness and excused himself from any similar meetings of criticism and self-criticism among the secretariat membership. Nevertheless, the United Secretary meetings of September and October were a landmark for the party's intra-party struggle at the very top. Early in 1933, Qin Bang and Zhang Wenqian had criticized Mao for not knowing Marxist theory and banished him from his power center, the power center. Now, Mao asked Zhang Wenqian instead to leave Yang'an to undertake investigation and research to remedy his dogmatism and subjectivism in the faraway corner in northern Shanxi. Still a secretarial member, Zhang Wenqian relinquished his oversight power of the, on the propaganda and the educational matters for the party. Mao Zedong thus cleared the hurdles for the subsequent reorientation of the party approach to propaganda and education. After his political victory over Zhang Wenqian, Mao Zedong seemingly used the common recommendation on the future composition of the communist leadership to further set up two com uh, committees directed under the political bureau and the secretariat, respectively called the Reckoning the Party's History, Historical Records, uh, with Mao as the chairman, and another one called Capital Screen, uh, uh, with the uh, the organizing chief, Siemens chief. The former sought to set the party's records straight, while the latter uh, focused on rehabilitating the victims of earlier partnership. 
Mahi Musaf headed the first one and appointed the secretary, secretary to member come organizing organization department chief to the second. Later, Mao secretary separately set up a committee to review the work of purges during the 1930s, first headed by Kansen and Tun Ba, and at Kansen's suggestion, Mao further installed a committee to summarize the earlier bloody purge of North Sanxi and made Lin Bixi the chairman. Both Tun Ba and Lin Bixi had shared the party's obsession with central control and had collaborated with Mao Zedong in the bloody purges of the communist uh, areas in the early 1930s, of which few victims had survived. So they were not survived, can rehabilitate, uh, no way. Uh, but now they start to focus on the purge that occurred after the Mao was out of power and start to indict Wang Ming, Qin Bang Xian, and Zhang Wenqian for the intense intra-party party struggle and the bloody purges that had resulted from their attempt to ruin local and regional assertiveness. Gao Gang, a victim to the bloody purge of North Sanxi, for example, then appeared to mobilize this content and grief with the party leadership in the first five years of 1930s. Getting the help of the habitated purge team victims, Mao proceeded to proceed use a party history along the lines Stani had inspired and a history that portrayed him as the infallible and indefectible leader of the Chinese Communist Party since its founding days. Unable to bring Wang Ming to his knees, Wang Mao Zedong sought to consolidate the victory by asking high-ranking cadres to further study party history to set an example of how to do the job Mao Zedong directed Gao Gang in late 1942 to carry out a reputation campaign among the high-ranking cadres in Northwest, emphasizing the um, supremacy of the party organization over the parallel civilian and military organizations, uh, institutions. He asked Gao Gang to examine the history of the border history in light of the two lines struggle, or in other words, to set the scores in the regional party history. Gao Gang and the late Liu Zidan then appeared as the embodiment of the correct party line by the party leaders sent by the earlier kind of party center to carry out the policies were considered wrong because of its kind of erroneous line. Victims of brutal local purge of 1936 as well as failure uh, to uh, as a well as failure to re re recognize regional talents combined to encourage, combined to encourage regional cadres to challenge party leadership from 1931 up to 1942. Interestingly enough, no similar review occurred about Mao's bloody purge in Jiangxi, which had become uncontrollable because the party leadership then emphasized the discipline and the central control which then be as, uh, as one of the three member delegates sent to Jiangxi to control Mao's Soviet area. And so, well, in reckoning the records of party history of the San Sangani, uh, Christian and Sakh Christian inevitably caught up some of Mao's kind of followers, but with his ultimate kind of goal being to describe the earlier partnership, Mao made no intervention on their behalf. The successful conclusion of the Northwestern and Bureau Conference prepared for the complete reshuffle of the party leadership. Uh, Jiang Kai-shi's publication of China's Destiny also gave the party an extra reason to promote the Mao's supreme, supreme, supreme message with the, in the party. On March 20, 1943, Ten days after the formal publication of Jiang's work, Mao Zedong was formally invested with the power to make ultimate decisions regarding important matters of party. He simultaneously recognized the seven, reorganized the seven main secretariats into a triumvirate, 
in which Mao shared power only with political bureau member Renbis and alternative political uh, politburo uh, member Liu Shaoqi. The other secretariat members, Zhang Wenjian, all seven, and Zhang Wenjian, Qin Bangxian, Zhou Enlai, Wang Ming, Kang Sen, and Chen Yun could no longer claim equality with Mao and his two colleagues. About three months later, Liu Shaoqi wrote a long essay to commemorate the 22, uh, can, uh, second, 22nd anniversary of the party's founding day, uh, in which he narrated the party history in the model of struggle between two lines, making more the embodiment of correct Bolshevik party line. Unfailingly, combating erroneous uh, Menshevik or unspecified opponent, opportunist party leaders, the party history was thus rewritten into a Manichaean, Manichaean war between the forces of light and dark. Almost simultaneously, another of Mao's collaboration letters uh, from the party center in 1931, Bradley Perch of Jiangxi coined the term Mao Zedong's thought and elevated it into the ideological pantheon of Marxism. Okay. And, uh, in the autumn of 1930-43, Mao asked Liu Shaoqi, Nenbis, and Kang Sen to organize 200 to 300 high-ranking cadres and cadres to the party congress to sp spend five months uh, to again study the party history together with Stalin's uh, kind of short course history of Soviet communism. The three men enjoyed the, the right to scrutinize the participants Read reflective notes other than their oral self criticism as an encouragement. 50 to 30, 60 uh, promised no cadres, particularly the young and female, were given the honor to participate in the elite study group uh, led directed by Mao. In this study session, Nimbis exemplified the process with his self criticism uh, and, of course, echoed Mao's criticism of Wang Ming, Qin Bangxian, and Zhang Wenqian, Nen was also given the duty to persuade Wang Ming to accept Mao's kind of criticism and uh, inter-party uh, inter, uh, interpretation of the party history. Okay, I, I would uh, uh, and uh, here. Uh, I will jump to this. Just here, the, the whole thing I want to stress is the a lot of people thought and the Mao this time can deviate from Russia. And the Russian communism played a low role in kind of shaping kind of communist kind of policy. And uh, all the, and the, the way. I think that's absolutely not true at all. Uh, there's no there's no Mao still can kind of respect the kind of the, the most, uh, Stalin's authority. In fact uh, in his doing in in the in sort of party kind of, uh, uh, he, Followed kind of Stalin kind of kind of and the hint and to do all the kind of job. This is what I want. So commenting and study is very very important. This is the key point I want to make here. And also, Stalin's kind of blessing is very essential for Mao kind of returning and going to get into power center uh, in of the Communist Party. That's the the whole thing. Later I will continue. But certainly, he wanted to first. Uh, uh, he has a way to mobilize the discontented and the uh, formal kind of high-ranking cadres to put pressure on the government and other people to make them to say you are you are wrong. You have to. Uh, this thing. Uh, now, in the second part, rectification through examples. This uh, Mao believed that this is uh, two stories about one's way. Uh, and uh, Ushiru. Basically, uh, I don't know what time. Uh, what this time is. Uh, I will kind of make it a simple story. I, I use talk. The first one is rectification through the examples of Wang, Wang Suwei and Ushiru. Wang Suwei is a, a research, a member of the research staff of the uh, Yang'an, the, the, uh, of the Communist kind of the 
中央里就是伸出来很设计。王世辉 ，I came from Academia Seneca, our name is called 中央研究院。The comments are also have the same. <laughs> so I always get to mix up something because they have totally different chain. But the main and the the Zhongyuan chain was actually is place to study Marxism. Okay, uh, it's not studying that. Uh, they all my academic has totally different. Okay, uh, uh, we don't know that. And uh, the thing is, uh, in these times, uh, Mao try to impose and uh, ask the. Uh, uh, the his version not only can the try to can the rectify the other than the higher and high cabinets, higher cabinets and low middle cabinets. And then the thing is they he found out among most of the cabinets that they are the young people they come most from coast areas. Sometimes they had a different kind of ideas. They had they not only they but they they might kind of uh, have some kind of problem with kind of uh, uh, of kind of um, they call the the the, the, the dogmatism in their stuff in their actually studying the the Marxist kind of kind of or something. But on the other side, well, the major problem is that they never learn to behave like a party man and. Uh, they, they don't know the part of discipline and part of important. And they, they do not have. So they sometimes they come from the outside. And so most of the time they try to impose this kind of, uh, the, the, uh, his, he, his kind of ideo, kind of establish his ideological kind of supremacy. So he tried to kind of, uh, 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 develop some kind of, a, a kind of a test. The, the most important one is called his speech of the Yangan um, Yangan literature and uh, and and Yangan uh, uh, and arts. And uh, through that, he really kind of set model. You know how you the people, how the, how all the cabinets should behave, and they should kind of criticize sometimes uh, se severely and try to adapt the the. the the, the new mode of thought and try to identify with the really kind of the downtrodden classes. Uh, 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 and then instead of acting as a kind of a, a, a traditional kind of type of elites. Uh, so they ask them. Uh, so the whole thing here. And then the thing is, Mao could not kind of reform and correct all these people. So he had to find people to do things. Then he find the kind of Wang Siwei and Wu uh, Xilu. He created kind of specimen and use this and uh, to enlarge the here what he called uh, the soft kind of struggles, uh, and really kind of put kind of pressure on the Wang Siwei. Uh, and uh, the thing is, uh, in doing this, he tried to involve all the kind of people. The, the, his once with colleagues and superiors of people in, in the, the thought struggle. And, uh, but, uh, and then you stand as a way to kind of just like an uh, example to show, you know, if you do not follow the most kind of prescribed kind of, kind of uh, ideology and, uh, and then the thing is, you would kind of make kind of problem, make kind of the, the top, uh, the one's waste problem. Uh, and this is basically, uh, and the one's way was put in through into the thought struggle for more than kind of 60, uh, 50 or 60, yeah. All people come in and uh, and the first, uh, you know, they, he had kind of mobilized his, uh, but what he actually do, he just, uh, yeah, because he, he Challenge some of Mao's kind of viewpoint, and particularly the party kind of principles. Uh, uh, this is uh, in the second part, and uh, the third part uh, is uh, the intensification of the kind of uh, cabinet screen. I just say is uh, Mao want to kind of make sure all the kind of the, the cabinets kind of loyal to the center, and uh, he say he try to collect all the data. The, during, during the rectification, because all kinds of, most categories, all kinds of are uh, organized according to different units, they are mobilized to criticize, to read most documents, 22, 
rectification document. And in light of the document, they have to criticize themselves and to, uh, uh, and, uh, to exact, examine that. And all this kind of stuff kind of uh, give more open data. So later they have to catch the screen. Now, catch the screen, in fact, I say this way is to, to show you. Uh, is, uh, the, the fundamental here I will talk mostly is the, a lot of people think that they start, they don't carry screen kind of, now try to kind of uh, unleash a lot of people to kind of, uh, they, 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 they run kind of buy cabinets and to make it kind of, uh, to, uh, uh, to make charge and uh, of the all kind of, they, 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 they the the cabbage the um, how's it uh, the cabbage who has some kind of suspicious kind of grounds and uh, uh, kind of suspicious grounds but uh, I think I think let me kind of just take, take, just use one one example is better just this is infant story I think is In fact, two former, uh, uh, former kind of deputy minister of organization, organization department after 1980s, one is Xiao Li Rui, another Xiao Zhengzi, both were falsely accused during the Cabinet Screen kind of Committee as they, they, they are suspicious of being inspired, okay, uh, or have other kind of deviation kind of behaviors. And but they, they went through the whole thing, and uh, Zheng Zhi was in the Zheng Zhi was in the Zheng Zhi is later the deputy minister of the central organization department can be used, uh, can be used uh, to demonstrate the situation. Zheng Zhi had joined the Communist Party in 1926, a new Mao Zedong wear in Jingang San. He's a close friend of his wife, of Mao's wife, and uh, he knew kind of Mao Zedong very well, and enrolled in the Central Party School as a student. According to her, every high-ranking cadre enrolling uh, took turns to report his or uh, her personal history in front of cellmates. Okay. Sometimes the president, Peng Zhen, and other higher cadres would be around. The process she described was a climate of criticism and self-criticism. However, the standard by which the cadre, uh, the cadre examined his life was no longer subjective sectarianism or the like. He was now expected to be completely honest in placing his life in front of the party as embodied by the cell meeting. Zheng Zhi took five to six days to relate her entire personal history. After studying and digesting the materials for one or two days, her cellmates took turns to raise questions about her and demand the answer as well as clarifications. Unable to subdue her, they began to show impatience and apply pressure to her, first by individuals, then by the whole cell, and finally by conveyor built inter inter interrogation. They questioned her day and night. The interrogation usually lasted until 2 to 3 o'clock in the morning, and sometimes the entire night. Extreme physical torture was not used, but but her examiners might beat her with hands, push her like a rock ball, 
or in the worst case, pull her hair and kick her shanks. In their frustration, they might hear calling her shit eater, or worse than worse than dog shit. Shameless with a face thicker than the wall. The Central Party School sent activists from other cells to bring Zenzi to her knees, but she just refused to give in. In the end, the party spent two more weeks on her case, although she was not henceforth left alone. The scrutiny in her cell ended. Zenzi considered her case an easy one. For in the case, the Central Party School might spend one month scrutinized and pressured. Unable to persuade her families, Zenzi was still sent to the detention house of the Central Party School to work as a recorder of interrogation, waiting for her final verdict under suspicion of frightened, uh, frightened meaning running away from her duty, assigned duties, and simply worked for her election in the municipality. Around this time, her husband, the late Guangdong King, King of Guangdong, and the party secretary of Guangdong, the fourth man of number four man of the Communist Party during the Cultural Revolution, Tao Zhu, was also detained and scrutinized for the similar charges. This is the story. This is the category screen in the whole process. Then a lot of people were implicated. They were falsely accused. But in actuality, Mao didn't care whether they really false accused her. Even in Zhengzi wrote all the stuff to Mao. Mao didn't reply to his letter to him, her at all. But later, Mao just told him, I understood what happened. So, everything. But since uh, still, it caused a lot of trouble. But the thing is, because the whole process is, is a mass line, they, they called the, the, the common people to involve themselves in the whole thing. So Mao didn't can just set up the, 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 the framework and, and let them to do the different job. Uh, uh, and actually, the wife who really oversight presided the whole thing is Liu Shaoqi. Uh, but later, when we talk about all the, the deviations, all the leftist accesses, most people put blame on consent. That's absolutely not true. They know. Uh, uh, and actually, Mao, because of when I read the kind of documents in 1943, I couldn't understand why the Kansen accompanied Liu Shaoqi uh, to all kind of units. Actually, Liu Shaoqi is the one who did all the good things, but with the Mao's kind of permission. That's why, in the end, nobody, the whole the country kind of screen process was not criticized at all. And actually, Mao, yeah, Mao thought this is a very good thing because he knew all the people, all the cabinets, all the right, yeah, and all that are witnesses he could kind of control. Uh, and also, they, they make sure, you know, how loyal they are. I think this is the, the same. Now, let me continue the pictures, and I show some I can tell you. Uh, this is the two books. This is the first one, it's the, the Soviet. The, the, the short post, the, 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 uh, the, um, the, the history of the, so, the, the, the Soviet Communist uh, This one is the 32 kind of doc, recommended uh, rectification documents. This is one. This is the very important. And most people, when we talk about the, the Chinese kind of relation with Russia, we usually don't pay attention to this book. That book is extremely important. Uh, and uh, and this is the the uh, uh, the twenty two uh, rectification document should be studied, and uh, this is the table of contents, and this is you know if you are you know the criminologist you see the people how they say how can they you can know the power distribution here you know this is when one we just come back this is the middle okay. And you know, Mao is here. Okay, <laughs> this is 1980, 1970. So, and this is here. Uh, and all those most people here later support Mao, they are returned students. They are not kind of men. Only in this whole chart, I guess, only Mao was not in, in Russia. Uh, the rest are all in Russia. 
Uh, uh, some kind of study that for a long time. Uh, this is the one. Well, no picture. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, this is United Front. This is uh, the Wang Ming and Zhou Enlai gift the kind this stuff gift to the kind of KMT kind of uh, Air Force uh, commander. They want to kind of make it, uh, Wuhan the Madrid of China to defend the Wuhan. And but Jiang Kai said didn't want to do it because he thought if he fought the war he will lose everything. Uh, and uh, actually, Mao felt that that's a stupid thing to do. Uh, so Mao, okay, this is uh, uh, now this is the in the Seventh Party Congress. You know, this Mao is here, so it's totally different one. Uh, uh, he does his uh, have everything in control. Uh, this is his secretary, uh, and during the election, Fu Changmu. Uh, it's hard to find the earlier picture because he's. Uh, uh, Fu Qiao Mu. Uh, 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 this is Fu Qiao Mu with the Mao Zedong uh, in the 1940 kind of line. Uh, this is Fu Qiao Mu in, uh, in 50. He was goes, he, 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 he is, you can say, um, he had a Mao all kind of about the editorial work. So he knew Mao's kind of personal things very well. But he, uh, only before his, his death, he left a, a book, and people know a little bit more. But before, even you try to find his picture earlier, you couldn't find it. Uh, this is the designized and uh, enhanced kind of rectification. Uh, you can say Mao, I think he's not that kind of, uh, he's still, uh, this is a later kind of oil painting, trying to say all people can, uh, very healthy, uh, not male. Uh, uh, this is wrong. And you see, they also sign the, the, the. There's no study, you notice it. No study. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is uh, the, the, the people get together to. Uh, uh, this is the called the Mao Zedong and the attendance of the Yemen's Forum on Literature. This, uh, he, he, in fact, this is, has three sessions. They, 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 Mao first get in and to give a talk, uh, uh, but uh, uh, later he gave a conclusion. Okay, yeah. uh, this is one, it's, uh, the one, the Dini, I saw the Dini. Dini is the one who encourage and uh, uh, people to criticize party leaders. Uh, uh, and, and he said the dark side of the Yang An, uh, but he died, he died in uh, when he didn't die, okay. Uh, this is the, her husband died as a mother, the first one, and then she went to Yang'an. In fact, he's uh, because during the rectification uh, uh, in 1940, he was asked to the, by the party personnel to say why they they thought there was a special of his royalty. What's the reason? Reason is simple because he was uh, arrested by KMT by KMT kind of uh, agents. And uh, the, 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 the head of KMT the, uh, intelligence apparatus uh, put him, him and his uh, another wife in different places, in a big house. And then he, in the middle, he left. Uh, uh, but her, that man who uh, lived together with, with, with Dini and they gave birth a baby. And that became a simple and uh, quiet. People began to think of how you could you live with some guy and get pregnant with such a, a bad guy. Uh, uh, that guy later stayed in Taiwan, become the, uh, the, the uh, chief, chief librarian right, in, the, in, in the intelligence place. That was called Feng Long. Feng Long. Uh, but anyway, this is interesting. He was. Uh, he is very kind of uh, progressive, but uh, in Yang'an, he really tried to change it. Uh, and, uh, but he was undissatisfied. He's a feminist. He was dissatisfied. Uh, so he wanted to call the party to make some change. So in the, that time, Mao reorganized the Liberation Daily. 
and uh, he asked uh, the the chief editor, the uh, uh, the chief of the newspaper, asked Dinning to to edit the kind of supplementary literature. So he encouraged people to say, you know, we should can expose the dark side of Yan'an, and then we can improve. This is that his real point. But the thing is, Mao, when the people responded to his power and to write short essays just once away, they began to say, yeah, to, 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 to criticize, particularly they talk about the, 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 the hierarchy system uh, and, uh, and the, the, the challenging kind of authority. And, and I think Mao didn't like it. Mao told, that's why Mao make a kind of, uh, like a, uh, once away, a, a, the attack of the stop struggle. But uh, he later, he was understood the Mao's meaning. He joined the Mao, and in some way, he wrote kind of self criticism also. And he, he himself also tried to kind of cut lines with the one's way, uh, and put the tremendous pressure with one's way. Oh, uh, uh, this is that. Uh, this is the one's way. This young, very handsome one. <laughs> uh, he, he dropped out. He used to work in the post office, uh, his father. Uh, he came from actually, but he was very poor. But anyway, I give it. This another Wu Xilu is another one. Uh, well, Wu Xilu is a Guangpu Academy kind of cadet. Uh, but he graduated. But he was kind of just simply because he said something. Uh, uh, why not? Uh, we do not talk too much about class, class. Let me talk about nationalism. And he was kind of put in the South struggle. And then later he found it was to be an agent, a KMT agent. Uh, but later he was rehabilitated anyway. Uh, this one. Uh, this is his essential, he, he essential China. And do all this essential, he dressed like the KMT army soldiers, their officers. Because during the war times, the Communist is part, army is part of the KMT army. Uh, but they act, operate independently. Uh, but this time the KMT want to learn guerrilla war because the communists are supposed to be the expert of guerrilla wars. So they, they, they try to, to, to teach the KMT officer about guerrilla wars. But the, the, the KMT couldn't learn, learn, learn them. Even they learned it because they didn't know how to do it. Because guerrilla war is very complicated. It's not just the, uh, the communist guerrilla war is different from the Western type of guerrilla war. Uh, 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 the way they stress on the political side of the things. Uh, this is the one who 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 used the Conway, uh, authorized the and uh, built and uh, uh, built uh, interrogation, and then he got somebody kind of falsely accused. And uh, he, later he was the chief negotiator for the Korean War. Okay, and well here you look at he looks very nice, but he's the one one because. Uh, they, 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 they tried to crack, crack down a young kid, a teenager. Uh, they spent uh, three days to interrogate him. They didn't let that guy sleep. And then the people thought, you know, they don't know uh, too much. They then asked him, and he said, continue, continue. <laughs> then they found out that guy is a, uh, is a Camden agent. Actually, he was not. But uh, he, they used this case to Accused a lot of kind of underground kind of party of Hurland, all kinds of stuff. Even the organized kind of party, uh, the Sichuan party secretary was implicated. And then that guy's wife died, committed suicide. And he himself was committed suicide. This is what. Uh, this is uh, Central Party School. If you, you read the old kind of books, usually you don't talk about his role in the rectification and something. And he's actually, he's it's the, the worst guy. Yeah. <laughs> this, this guy. Yeah. Yeah. This is his beautiful wife. And this is a delay. A delay. Yeah. Uh, and he was, an, after he was released, and this is his wife. This is a very interesting story. Uh, they, they are good friends. They went to Yan'an together, uh, the surfing in Kang was She was supposed to be the first, one of the most beautiful ladies in Yan'an. Uh, well, yeah, this is 10 years after the case. And uh, then they say his husband was suspect, suspect to be the KMT spy. Uh, and uh, he 
he didn't like his her husband, so they got in trouble. And uh, actually, he fell in love with the guy whom sent whom the party sent to rescue her. Okay, uh, rescue her. And if he fell, she fell in love with that, that person, Deng Niqi. That's another person, Deng Niqi. A very famous one, Deng Niqi. Okay. Okay. Uh, this guy. Uh, uh, this is Tao Zhu, the Zhen Zhi and Tao Zhu. And the, the, the couple is one. Well. And this last one, I just said to conclude, uh, I just, uh, when I make a slide, I think this is a good one. Because this one, his wife was, uh, uh, Jumped into well, uh, committed suicide uh, during the rectification. Now he himself is the United Front and Deputy Minister of United Front. He is the only Chinese who saw ever saw Lenin. Uh, Lenin. And uh, anyway, but uh, it seemed to be the rectification did him quite well. He became very devoted kind of Maoist. Uh, and in 1958, I think Mao thought to make him the Prime Minister. Uh, to replace Donna. And uh, he was the, uh, and uh, he, he has a famous kind of line. We have to trust Chairman Mao. Uh, uh, to the extent we, you know, we just can follow him, uh, uh, to the extent of superstition, we just follow him. And uh, we have to obey Mao, uh, Chairman Mao. We have to the extent, we have to obey him blindly. This is what he said. Uh, uh, this, uh, yeah, but he died uh, before the court, uh, I think before the court revolution. So I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. After, after we begin here. Uh, these are the pictures. This are the. I'm sorry, I, I didn't know. I, the first part is too long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think uh, later. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you.